Um, all right. So this this particular um, mineral has six planes of cleavage. Six different planes of cleavage. Six directions of cleavage. Do you see that? That was one of the biggest things that I thought you would appreciate. Um, it's 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 fantastic. <laughs> it is fantastic, but it doesn't always fracture along those cleavage planes. It can fracture in different ways. And I believe, if, if I remember, it does fracture subconquitally. So much cleavage! Yes, I know. It has a white streak, but the more iron... Again, you can have iron, so you see the formula again, a ZNS. Well, the ZN in the formula can be replaced with a different cation, iron, FE. Well, as more and more iron replaces the zinc, depending on whatever's available in the system, that, uh, that streak actually can change. So the color of the streak, and the streak is the color... I'll show you. I like showing you guys. This is what streak is. So I'm going to try, I'm going to use this mineral here, this piece of sphalerite, and I'm going to just drag it along there. So it's kind of a, a nice little white. Well, actually, there is a little bit of um, tiny, tiny tinge of brown in there. And I wonder if I could see it on the white plate or not. Actually, there is a slight off-white because there's a bit of iron in this. That's cool. You can't see it in here. Maybe you can. It's right here. You can see it a bit right there. You can see it just a slightly off-white hue. But um, I would probably call this white a, a white streak or slightly off-white, maybe. I'm not going to touch that one. Um, but this clearly is pretty dark. It probably has a bit of iron in it. It's also exceptionally heavy. Um, and dense, which is another distinguishing property of this particular mineral. Do you guys see what streak is, though? So the streak in this case is white, and it can be brown ag again with increased amounts of iron. So the colors of this mineral, so what, what you see, right, if you were to say, hey, this is sphalerite, and this little tiny piece here, this is also sphalerite there, what would you call sphalerite as this color? I would personally say, well, I've got two samples and both are different colors. One is brownish black to kind of a gold yellow. There's some kind of golds and yellows in the back. And look at that. Look at that luster. A luster is, again, the way the light reflects off of a surface of a mineral. It's quite insane. Uh, that, is, that, is, that is bordering on adamantine to sub submetallic right there. Um, as for this one... It's a very different color. I'd say it's probably a brownish red. And uh, it's luster. Well, I, I don't know if I can tell. Not in the camera, but by my eyeballs, I would say it's vitreous. So vitreous, submetallic. We've got two different, two very different samples of minerals today, right? And... In this case, it's because of the iron differences. I don't have a microscope to zap this with a laser to tell you how much iron is in this or not. They're still both sphalerite. And the, and the amount, of, amount of iron is negligible such that it isn't going to be written in the, in the chemical formula. There's still not enough to be written in the chemical formula, but it is, it is there. Question so far. That white stuff on this, is that what you're asking? Uh, yeah, the white one doesn't. So the one on the white uh, matrix, it, it it doesn't probably have very much iron at all. It's a nice little piece of sphalerite that's very, very kind of a light brown red. And then the other flecks on there that you're seeing, those little other colors, those are chalcopyrite, which is a completely different mineral. Yes, there is a useful feature of this mineral, St. Luke. I will get there. I don't think so. I don't think the black one has more red in it. But... Uh, Here's the thing, St. Luke, you're allowed to have that opinion. And if that's what you see, that's what you would write down in your notes. That's how geology works. You write down what you see, not what anybody else sees. But you have to be consistent with your notes. So your notes always make sense to you. Now, it's best to understand and know what the color, I don't know, buff looks like. Because you do want to be consistent with everybody else as well to the best of your ability. But everybody does see things a bit differently. It could be your monitor, too. All right. Next thing, uh, luster is resinous, adamantine, or submetallic. 
Um, I would personally call the little red sample, the tiny, tiny guy, I would call him resinous. I'm sorry, not resinous. Um, uh, 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 vitreous. Or maybe adamantine. It's very, very shiny. The other I would definitely call submetallic. Maybe some resin, resinous areas there, too, on this side. There's some... Yeah, I would honestly... Yeah. That's... Yeah. I, I'd say that's probably resinous. You see some definitely submetallic planes here. Good God, that's so pretty. There's that one plane I kept wanting to get. Six planes of cleavage. God, I love this sample. This sample is only $7. I'm proud of that find. All right, questions so far about minerals or mineralogy or how to identify minerals. Anything about streak, color, hardness? Oh, the hardness of this mineral is three and a half to four. So on the most hardness scale, going from one to 10, one being talc, 10 being diamond, it's kind of a, maybe a moderate hardness, low to moderate hardness. It's not crazy hard. It's brittle. So if you drop it, it could potentially shatter. So is diamond. Diamond is brittle. And that's the tenacity. So the brittleness has to do with not the hardness. The hardness has to do with each the ease to which a mineral is scratched, whereas the tenacity has to do with how does it deform under pressure or stress. Yes, there are things harder than a diamond. There's a different, um, I think it's Wurtz, Wurtz on nitride, I think, is harder. There's a couple of man-made things that are harder, and hexagonal diamond is harder. It's a different, uh, a different type of structure. The carbon forms a different type of structure. Um, but they they really aren't, they still really aren't referred to in, in terms of hardness because there are not that many things. So again, these are a couple of samples of sphalerite. And these are not the samples that I typically am familiar with. I'm familiar with ones that look more like this. This is more common. In fact, let me put this. I'll put it in a white box. You can see it a little easier because it's dark on that dark. Oh, it forms uh, tetrahedrons, cubes, and dodecahedrons, depending on the space and the available constituents in which it forms. The refractive index is 2.369, so it's actually exceptionally high um, because of, uh, well, it can be submetallic. So it makes sense. Diaphaneity is just how can light trans... trans uh, transmit through the the object or not and in this case yes it can it's transparent and translucent but the more iron that's in it the more metallic it becomes and the less uh translucent it is the more transparent it becomes the more opaque it starts to become it doesn't mean it's an uh, an opaque mineral it's not it's translucent but it can become somewhat more cloudy due to the presence of iron again it is brittle so that's how it's going to deform under the presence of stress or pressure in the crystal system, it forms in the isometric, which is one of six crystal systems. Yeah, that's correct, Weasel. Um, it's in the sulfides, and we can see that it has sulfur in the crystal formula, so we know that's true. Uh, and it occurs in hydrothermal sulfide deposits. Um, and there's more to that than just that. It's an, an exceptionally uh, important ore for zinc. It's actually the most uh, sought for mineral for, for zinc, I believe. And um, so in that regard, it's, it's largely mined, uh, not, not for mineral collectors, but for, for uses. Um, modern times, you have decent breathing devices. That's true. And this is another thing about uh, Spallery I actually didn't know, is that it dissolves slowly in hydrochloric acid. So it's not going to effervesce like you see when I drop hydrochloric acid on some calcite but it will dissolve very slowly over time. So maybe keep your acids away from your sphalerite, I, I guess. I don't know. It's going to be fine. But the, the moral of the story is here that in this, this mineral will weather out of a system a little bit faster because of its, its um, ability to be dissolved so easily. It's also triboluminescent and pyroelectric. Uh, pyroelectric meaning... It, um, 
it generates a small amount of uh, vibration when under heat. When under heat. Piezoelectric is the same thing, but when a mineral is put under pressure, it generates uh, vibration. All right. Um, tribal luminescent uh, basically just means that you can get a bit of light off of it from breaking the mineral, uh, from scratching it, from abrading it. Um, kind of like chert. Chert does that. It, uh, not chert. Um, flint which is a microcrystalline form of quartz. All right, so another mineral that's a polymorph to sphalerite. So again, this is sphalerite. Another mineral that's a polymorph is wurtzite. Wurtzite. I think I spelled that right. Yay! So this is a polymorph. So here's the thing, though. This actually does have and can have some iron in the, in the formula. So if... There's enough replacement of the zinc by the iron in the in the cation space here in this mineral, then you're going to end up with wordsite and not sphalerite. So this is wordsite, and it's a very similar mineral. It's got the same hardness. It's got a very high specific gravity, um, so very high density. This one was named in 1861. I wonder when sphalerite was actually named. 1847! Sphalerite wins! This calls it a dimorph, and that's because there's only two. So I guess there's not more than two. So it's not polymorph. It's a dimorph. I'm trying to think if there's anything else on here that I wanted to say. Because I haven't actually looked at this. It does fracture conchoidally. That makes sense. I thought it was subconchoidally, but that works too. Isotropic, um, refractive index is 2.369. Oh, I forgot. It does have the synonym blackjack, which is a common uh, name for this for miners. That's one thing I did read about. Is it an astrodeer? Sphalerite? Really? What does it look like? Light blue and roundish? That's not right. That's not, that's, yeah, no. Here, this is what it actually looks like. It's also annoying. Why? Do you need it all the time? So this is a red sample of sphalerite. This is a uh, dark brownish black sample of sphalerite. And they're typically, they can be kind of yellow. You can see some yellow there. Um, they can be kind of uh, submetallic in terms of luster. Uh, they can have six planes of cleavage. They can, uh, they're tribal luminescent. They're pyroelectric. They're quite actually interesting. Um, it has a polymorph named wurtzite. Uh, and it's, a, it's based on hexagonal closed packing, which is just a structural thing. Uh, it's got over 40%, or I guess 40% um, iron can actually substitute for the zinc, which in, I guess, that case, it would be wordsite. Uh, higher temperatures are typically associated with the increased amounts of iron content. And uh, other, other trace elements include manganese and, and cesium that can replace the zinc as okay, well. So this is the... That's phthalerate? Wait, are these? It's a cog. It looks like a blue cog. At least they call it zinc material. It is all this blue stuff. Huh. Well, I mean, Sveller, it's not blue ever. But... That dark gray I could maybe buy. That's kind of cool. So yeah, these are these are in fact. Uh, let's just look at sphalerite pictures. So yeah, it's a lot of orangey yellows. If if you want it in gem quality, otherwise it's very dark. It's very dark and gray and kind of metallic. Resinous metallic. Ooh, that's a pretty one. There's, I think, I don't know if you can have green ones. You might be able to. All right, back to sphalerite. I want to look at this mineral under the microscope quickly, though. Um, it's also called zinc blend. Uh, I did mention that it's uh, marmatite. Uh, it's an older, it's an older name, um, and specifically for the iron rich varieties. Um. Oh, the tetrahedral crystals are often seen with the triangular markings. You'll see a lot of what looks like a bunch of little triangles here and there 
in in otherwise um, massive samples that don't have a lot of shape, like the one that I have. The little small one I have probably has some different decent um, decent habit on it, but I have yet to see under the microscope. And typically, this actually does occur as um, encrusting aggregates, cleavable masses, and um, bigger just chunks. Um, again, the color can be darker with iron, increased iron content. Um, the streak is darker with increased iron content, like I showed you. It can alter to oxides, hydroxides, sulfates, or carbonates of zinc and, and iron. Limonite, smithsonite, siderite, etc. Um, siderite is one I think we've already gone over, in fact. Smithsonite I still need a decent sample of. Limonite I don't have. Um, again, it dissolves slowly and dilute HCl, so it's not going to effervesce like the carbonates do, but it will dissolve slowly. Um, but you don't want to do it because it will release um, um, sulfuric acid and it smells like rotten eggs and you don't want to just do that. Don't You don't want to have that in your house, sulfuric gas. It's not, that's not good. That's not good. It's pyroelectric, so under the presence of heat, it's going to be able to vibrate. Um, some of the samples, not all, show tribal luminescence, so it glows when it's struck or abraded or broken, things like that. It's isotropic, that's the, um, that's the crystal system in which it grows. It has six planes of very characteristic cleavage. And it's one of the very characteristic things about this particular mineral. Uh, it's very common in hydrothermal sulfide deposits. It's the most important ore for, our, for zinc, for the mineral zinc that we, or the uh, material, the metal from which it's extract. Um, the following things are, are various various industries in which zinc is used. It's used to make castings, um, steel to resist rust, or to plate steel to resist rust, rather. It's, it's alloyed with copper to make brass, um, important in our diets, of course, and it's added to fertilizer. Um, it's also used in paint. It's, uh, it's used in soldering flux and as a wood preservative. It's also an important source of cadmium, which is used in batteries. And again, uh, cadmium would be the would be in trace amounts. Uh, in, indium, gallium, and, and geranium are also mined from sphalerite. Again, as trace trace elements, not as um, big bunches of them, if that makes sense. Ooh. All right, let's go. Let's go in for a look, shall we? Oh, there's a bunch of little calcopyrites on it. Hikari, you seeing this? Do you see all those little calcopyrites? It's covered in little calcopyrites. I don't know what the white matrix is. Ooh. See, that one's got a little bit more color to it, but it's still not bright blue. That's a piece of calcopyrite right there. This, though, this is cool. I'm going to see a different side of it. That's cool. Come on. So it's kind of an orangey, orangey yellow, really. It's definitely gemmy. I suppose that is adamantine. I want to get the side of it. Okay, hold up. Oh, that's so cool. Look at all those little calcopyrites. They're so cute. Ay -ya -ya! It's too damn funny. Really isn't a lot of uh, a distinct shapes that I can... I like that the calcopyrite next to this phalerite, though, is pretty damn big. It's got a weird surficial texture on it. It is, it is, isn't it so nice, Wanagi? 
Okay, let's go in for a little bit of a closer look. Oh my god, that's so f cool. Oh, wow. I do too. I want a bigger one. I love that it's covered in calco pyrite. It's just so fucking cool. What a unique treasure. This is, I mean, it's just so interesting to know, too, that they're chemically similar and that they would form similarly. I wonder what the story is of this particular little piece. I wonder if this was a sedimentary environment. There's the calco pyrite. One of them. Let's look at another one. Just because I want to. There's another one. Oh, whoa. Do you see that structure? Oh. No, 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 no. I have to be really careful because it's easy to break this mineral. The little, the white crusty part. I wonder what the white crusty part is anyway. There. Hi, Calco Pyrite. All right, let's look at the big one. Let's look at the big one. So this is the, this is the, I was wrong. This was covered in a crust of jemmy sphalerite. This surface is more adamantine than that little guy. Oh, is right. Well, I want bigger minerals. All of the minerals, all of the sizes, the biggest of the minerals. Let's see here. So here's some metallic stuff. There's some more of that metallic stuff right there to the right. And then to the left, you see that yellow blurb that's more of the adamantine luster. It's interesting to see so many different varieties in one little cluster. Um, you can tell the lighter stuff has less iron, and the darker stuff, of course, is going to have more iron, generally speaking. But this is all the same mineral. This is all sphalerite. Let's look at this side. God, this is such a cool sample. I love it. I love this sample. I love sphalerite. Ooh. Hold on. That, though, is the prettiest. Where is Bill Nash when you want to show off how cool your minerals are? Oh, he's probably out doing photography this week, I think. Ooh, look oh. at that nice little plane. Reflection! Off. Reflection! Okay, I did it too much. The textures are just so interesting. Now let's go back to 50 times. We were at 1,000. Dude, it's so interesting. I'm in lover. Do you guys have questions about sphalerite before we do move on? Ooh. That's fantastic. That's crazy. Earwax colors, actually. That's a pretty damn spot on observation. Ooh. Do some biofringents.
Can I just do this forever? This is really, really exceptional. There was two little pieces over here. Oh, wow. This one, this is the guy. This is him. And then one over here. This guy. No, that's the same one. There was another one I wanted to look at. I think it was this one. This is really exceptional. It's, it's, it's this big. I'll hold it up to my face. For comparison. It's almost the size of not my forehead. It's not tiny. It's not tiny. God, you don't know? Yeah, it's decent size. See, Spurp, you don't know minerals. This one's tiny. This little tiny speck. That's a piece of sphalerite. That's the one that had calcopyrite growing all over it. That is the tiny one, sir. Sphalerite was fine. I dropped it on its head, and it's fine.